Earth is dominated by oceans. Over 70% of our land is covered by water, and it's pretty easy to consider Earth an ocean planet. But it's far from the only one. Even in our solar system alone, Earth is just one of dozens of ocean planets, some with water like our own, and others with far more exotic compositions. And beyond the solar system, there are exoplanets with oceans far stranger than anything we can imagine. What are some of the universe's ocean worlds? Before we go beyond the solar system, we have to talk about the gas giants and their moons. The outer planets are extremely water-rich, as is the rest of the outer solar system. When the solar system first formed, heavier rocky material fell toward the sun while lighter material, like ice, stayed in the outer reaches of the system, creating a gradient where the further away you go from the sun, the more water you find. By the time you reach Jupiter, there's so much water that begins to act like rock does on Earth, causing outer system objects to be covered in water ice crusts and below them liquid water oceans that act similar to Earth's mantle if you replace the lava with water. It's more accurate to call these structures water mantles instead of oceans, but we'll consider them oceans for this video. In this case, pretty much every large object past the asteroid belt has an ocean of some kind. Europa and Enceladus are the most well-known examples of objects with subsurface oceans, but almost every single major outer system object likely has an ocean in some form, with few exceptions like Io. In the outer solar system, subsurface oceans are normal, not the exception. Even Pluto is thought to have one. It's quicker to list the worlds that probably don't have subsurface oceans than the ones that do. But the outer solar system isn't the only place for liquid water. Mars could have vast underground aquifers made of liquid water hidden beneath the poles or other locations across the planet, like Hellas Basin and Utopia Planitia. In certain areas of Hellas Basin during the summer, liquid water is even seen to still flow on Mars today, providing evidence for vast underground Martian water reserves. The Moon, Mercury, and Venus could all similarly have underground liquid water, protected from their surface environments by miles of rock. And if liquid water wasn't common enough already, even Uranus and Neptune are expected to have it, in huge layers of supercritical fluid, which is a mix between liquid and gas, which are likely some of the largest water reserves in the solar system, though Jupiter and Saturn likely have even more water scattered throughout their atmospheres. Though all this water so far has been under something, whether that be rock, ice, or hundreds of layers of gas in the case of the gas giants. What about surface liquid? In this case, we don't have to look very far either, as multiple solar system objects have known bodies of liquid on their surface. Io has lakes of lava, and Saturn's moon Titan has seas of liquid methane on its poles. Even Venus, by certain definitions, is an ocean planet. Due to Venus's high atmospheric pressure, Carbon dioxide at the bottom of the atmosphere is compressed so much begins to act like a liquid, similar to the supercritical fluid found in the ice giants. Venus's surface is surrounded by miles of supercritical CO2, which acts very similarly to an ocean. Ocean worlds in our solar system seem to be more common than not, with most large bodies containing liquid in some capacity. But the ocean worlds of other systems can be far stranger than anything we have. This is K218b a mini-Neptune exoplanet about 124 light-years away from Earth that made headlines recently due to the James Webb Space Telescope potentially detecting oceans and a sign of life on the planet. However, as it turns out, K218b likely isn't habitable, and instead of possessing super-deep oceans of liquid water, it's likely that its surface is covered in lava under an extremely dense atmosphere, making it a super-Venus of sorts. The detection of certain chemicals in K218b's atmosphere could be explained by it having oceans of water, but oceans of lava fit the data better. It's unfortunate that K218b, which is in the habitable zone of its star, has turned out to likely be uninhabitable, but that doesn't mean it's not interesting. K218b isn't the only planet with probable oceans of lava. The exoplanets K2141b and 55 Cancri e, which is officially named Janssen, likely possess them as well. I've mentioned all three of these planets in my James Webb video, link in the description, but each of these planets is far different from any other. From K218b's likely extremely dense atmosphere to Janssen likely lacking an atmosphere entirely, to the potential chunks of sodium metal that would act similarly to Earth icebergs on K2141b, lava planets are extremely diverse, at least from the ones we know so far. But there are oceans out there in other systems that are made of more than just lava. This is GJ1214b, which is officially named Enipotia. To date, it's one of the most likely candidates for a water ocean planet, with the oceans on this planet likely reaching down for hundreds of miles if they exist. However, just because Enipotia might have large quantities of water doesn't make it habitable. Temperatures on Enipotia have been measured by James Webb to be over 500 degrees Fahrenheit, with a layer of metallic clouds above the surface. 
In this case, most of Anipocia's water should be boiling away, but if the planet has an extremely dense atmosphere, which it likely does, the water could be prevented by boiling by sheer pressure alone, making Anipocia have never-ending oceans of superheated water. These oceans would probably be underneath an atmosphere so dense it makes it hard to see where the air ends and the ocean begins, and that's not an exaggeration. Adipocia's oceans, if they exist, likely blend with its atmosphere in layers of supercritical fluid that make it hard to decide on a boundary separating ocean and atmosphere. Huge ocean plants with hundreds of times more water than Earth might not even be that uncommon, with other mini-Neptunes like LHS 1140b also being candidates for planets like this. And if a planet has a thick, hydrogen-dominated atmosphere, like many of them do, they would be classified as a type of planet not seen anywhere in the solar system, a Hyshin planet. Other than this, there aren't many candidates for ocean planets, though if our solar system is anything to go by, ocean worlds of all types should be common across the universe. So far, no planets with oceans with exotic compositions have been confirmed, but there are many scenarios for oceans made of chemicals other than water, lava, or methane to form. If the conditions are right, with high atmospheric pressure and low temperature, oceans of cold liquid carbon dioxide are possible, unlike the supercritical fluid of Venus. On exceptionally cold planets, liquid nitrogen oceans could form on the surface, and based on models of brown dwarf formation, any planets around brown dwarfs are likely to be very rich in oxygen, and as they cool down, oceans of liquid oxygen could be possible and common around planets orbiting brown dwarfs. In gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn, their atmospheres get so pressurized they begin to act like oceans of metallic hydrogen, and on colder planets, oceans of liquid ammonia could exist. This only scratches the surface of what oceans are possible in the universe, from lava to water to metallic hydrogen, oxygen, methane, and dozens of other chemicals. Oceans on other planets are likely to be far more exotic than anything we can imagine. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets, as well as my colonization of the solar system series.